The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Christ. Christ. How do we have the golden rule written on our hearts today? What does it really mean to love oneself the right way? All right, we, it doesn't work without the whole three. Okay, without the whole picture here. To really love God, we need to have true faith and trust in God. To love neighbor means to have faith in the neighbor, to have compassion. And that compassion and that willingness comes from our love to God, as well as loving ourselves the right way. And that is really, I was thinking about this all week, it's really a matter of faith in yourself. I mean, we kind of have a hard time. It pushes the boundaries for us, uh, what Jesus is saying here, to agape our neighbor, to have that divine uh, self-sacrificing love, total love for someone else. And uh, we really can't even see that for ourselves. But then, you know, we... we we get blindsided by the world and its rules. Like one of the, the, the uh, words you saw in my call to worship, churchianity. We get a little bit too involved in the religiosity and the rules that humanity has made for following, for following in faith, to deepening our love for God, to deepening a commitment that's not a self-righteousness and it's not an agenda-laden justice to go out there and to just selflessly help someone i uh, thought instantaneously of that her uh, terrible um amtrak accident that happened i guess a couple weeks ago there was a little inkling of that maybe i mean obviously i don't think those children were looking or thinking about these lessons but um, the Boy Scouts just started going about and started helping everybody from the derailed cars. They just decided to stop, drop, and help. And um, in this story, in this uh, gospel, Jesus is pointing out, well, the priest couldn't touch somebody who had open sores. It would make them unclean. And there was other rules and there was other regulations. And then a Samaritan, the Jews hated the Samaritans and the uh, Samaritans hated the Jews for uh, different goofy reasons. 
And it's the same how we have some polarization or a lot of polarization going on in our culture today. So, you know, for a Samaritan to, to stop, drop everything without thinking, oh, hey, I'm not going to help that guy. And just instant compassion says something beautiful on how he has that golden rule written on even his heart. And that's something that they probably were like, why would he have the golden rule that is just for the chosen people written on his heart? We have to be careful when we think of being children of God. We are children of grace, and we are tr truly children of promise. And that's something that isn't just a title, and that isn't something that uh, we should ever think lightly, because our whole entire life, our whole entire life should be a testimony to the Lord. And it should be something where we're not doing that uh, religiosity of accolades or um, uh, this, well, I'm doing to make myself uh, feel better. It's truly when you have believe, you belief, you believe so greatly in God that you do incorporate it in your soul and to your very being, that love of God. And then you feel the love of God loving you. And then you, you, you can understand how this sharing, this natural unfolding, this willingness to be beyond the self becomes so real. It becomes so real because you feel God's love. You love him. He loves you, and then you're beginning to have faith in yourself. That's a tricky question for me, or not a question, but uh, it's a sensitive topic uh, because I'm somebody who wears my heart on my sleeve, and I know other people do too. And, you know, if the world, if the world kind of, uh, as I said, says no, God says yes. And if you face a lot of rejection, you've got to not take that to hurt your own belief in yourself, the right kind of belief, okay? This is not a, a tower of Babel to I, me, mine. Uh, I have learn to incorporate a healthy love of myself or faith in myself, even though that was hard to say those words because our, our natural human nature wants to go the other direction. You know, think, oh, I love myself. Ooh. <laughs> but um, have faith in yourself to do what is right, to live love, to love likewise, to love likewise, to be love out there. Now, the one thing I learned from CPE in my first unit uh, years ago now is um, what that one man would say to me that was like boot camp, you know, quit trying, do. You got to stop saying, I'm going to try this. I, I'm thinking, I'm trying to think about it. It's not only a lack of commitment, but really it reflects, again, those fingers pointing back to uh, how little faith you have in yourself. And maybe we'll never have enough faith in ourselves to be full ambassadors of Christ, oh, fully in our lives because we have that imperfection we have that brokenness but this you know self-righteous lawyer said who is my neighbor he wanted to just kind of justify himself we're in a culture that justifies the self we're in a culture that erases the past doesn't learn from the past and justifies everything and anything and doesn't know how to really love any kind of love fueled by self-righteousness and uh, 
not really following the love or realizing the love of God, that's not, that's not truly living. That's not truly flourishing as a people of faith. Uh, what we have with Colossians is probably, it's one of the prison letters. Paul was in prison when he writ, wrote this. And it sounds very similar to Ephesians. And maybe he it was just in that same frame of thought, but he also he also was battling, um, you know, heretical thought going on with um, the Colossians, where they were seeing religiosity as sort of uh, or ritualism as sort of a way of well, I'm 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 showing and I'm doing love. You know, I, I, I put up a very risky post the other day. I, I, I bought a beautiful, uh, at a hippie store actually, an Appleton, uh, a butterfly cape. <laughs> now I was making a joke about, you know, well, I know this wouldn't pass as a liturgical cope. And um, I'm sure a lot of people balked at that and were like, oh gosh. Or, you know, a lot of people uh, probably find many little things where they just say, no, this isn't the way it's supposed to be. This isn't, you know, you're not following the rules. I've always enjoyed being a rebel. And I think to be a Christian today, you need to be a rebel against the world, a rebel in a good way. And that rebel in a good way is where we are going back to the truth. I was very disturbed uh, the other day going into a, well, a kind of a hippie bookstore and they had uh, witchcraft, uh, demonology, and um, occult stuff next to the Christian books. <laughs> and they had it all in one section. And that says something of how our culture has lost or uh, or has lost that grasp or take on the truth in how God grounds us or wants us and hopes for us to be grounded in naturally. We are living beings that were created by the Lord and we, we should in some senses have this natural desire and want to love to love this life that was given. That's that believe. That's that believing. And then, and then that's that receiving. Yes, there's other faiths out there, and I'm not knocking other faiths, but um, particularly for, for Christians, that receptivity should never be diminished and taken away by the world and the unholy trinity of the self. And I saw this smorgasbord of different things there. How to cast spells for money and health, or health, wealth, gospel books, and other kinds of stuff. And you're like, hey, where on earth are these people thinking? And then they had a lot of political books. And again, the moment we get political, like, the priest and the, the Levite were being political. Well, hey, some of the other priests might see me help this guy, so I can't. And, oh, I'm not following the, the, the law if I'm doing this, and, I, and so i got to cross on the other side. The end of the law, we know, is that agape love, that divine love, which is Christ, the totality of Jesus is the divine love of God, the Son of God. And the reason why he gave us that most precious pearl of grace, that most costly pearl of grace in our hearts, is for us to be grounded and reap. And that reaping is how are we how are we living into that law, that law of love written and formed and shaped into our hearts? 
The Holy Spirit always is doing work on us, doing a spiritual two-by-four to our heads. When we're not understanding and we're not doing, we're not doing the news of the gospel, but we're falling into the darkness of the world. I mean, you know, we're, we're, we have a problem with service today. Uh, service is a chore, or um, the almighty dollar uh, makes uh, service meritable. I mean, what would happen today, you know, well, if this, if there was a person on the side of the road beaten, I mean, would somebody just walk by and wait for a cop to come? Oh, wait, maybe he has a cell phone and maybe he can call. Or, you know, I'll, I'll think about it. I don't want to get involved. I don't want to get involved. <laughs> we do this same stuff today. And God is calling us to something more. He is calling us truly to a mission that is about this church in here. This church has four chambers, <laughs> but it is all organic. And that organic material, blood, flows through these veins into my hands and feet and um, works this brain up here for communication to come out. And my whole body should be living church. We are the church in the world. We are one in the mission of God when we realize and live to that golden rule, that, that golden, beautiful being, reality, love God, to love God, to love neighbor, I need to love myself, I need to have faith in myself the right way. And that, that faith is something that we always have to work on with ourselves. Because as I say, we can be pretty hateful and we could be pretty alien to one another. Even families where we can't be neighbors uh, to uh, or uh, express love to each other the right way. And, you know, we're, we're just seeing many examples of things in our world where that indifference is something that really blinds us to the truth. Indifference where someone uh, or that young boy who, or young man who murdered uh, a bunch of people uh, at a 4th of July parade in Illinois, you know, his father helped to uh, sign his gun uh, background checks. And the guy said, and then the, the, the father said, I, I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. Well, you know, you were, you were indifferent to like even recognizing the signs of your son having grave uh, emotional problems. You were indifferent to being a parent to him. And then, you know, now, you know, he lived out this ugliness and horrible evil indifference and murdering uh, seven people. You know, taking away a mother and a father who shield, a father who shield his infant, his infant son. We cannot be indifferent and call ourselves Christians. We cannot be saying we have faith if we really ain't going to live it. If we're, you know... If we're not going to be a part of the team, there is no I in team. <laughs> no, I won't go there with that one, but um, there, there isn't. Okay? We are to be love to each other in uh, more than one ways. St. Paul, beautiful spirit that he was and still is. He was writing these very free letters from prison. He said, no matter what, I'm going to preach and teach the gospel as the Holy Spirit is speaking through my heart to do. I'm going to just do it. I need to do it. I need to, I need to live my love for Jesus and how Jesus turned my heart and saved me. 
And, and that is loving neighbor. I have to love this congregation. You know, one of the things I was talking about with my study mate um, the other day, and it's wonderful because I said it's an ongoing relationship. I mean, now we're uh, colleagues in a sense, but I mean, this was a pastor that mentored me, and I studied with, and I still study with him, and we, we talked about, like, uh, living church today, in many senses, we're both grateful the way God kind of led us into our goofy, goofy journeys. That some people may say, well, you know, why, why did you go this path? Why did God lead you here? I'm the most free I could ever be right now. Because I am just answering to him, and I am just sharing, and I'm sharing that love that the Holy Spirit is letting overflow from my heart. And he feels the same way about what he's doing. He's mentoring several people right now where he's, he's helped them to let God best shape them. And that, that's like being a loving neighbor to someone. Being a true pastor is truly sharing that love and teaching, teaching and preaching and getting people to see, hey, Look at the great gifts you have. Live those gifts. Be, become those gifts to other people. That's that selfless, uh, humble, wonderful, divine love that we only have little snippets of. We, you know, I mean, we can fathom some of it at times, but not the whole picture. That's the amazing beauty and magnificence of Jesus Christ. So, when you're going out into the world and your workday world tomorrow and you're, no matter, you know, what you're doing or counting the clock or uh, the people that you're going to be with, live every moment and be love to someone else. You never know how much they're going to need it and appreciate it. And, and yes, love your enemy as yourself. <laughs> you know, um, if people are mean to you or, or, you know, snarky or whatever, turn the other cheek and, you know, say, hey, how are you doing today? Even if it really felt unnatural and you felt your frontal lobe fall off saying that, do it. Live it. Be it. Love it. Loving, gracious Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for all the lessons that you teach our hearts. Not just uh, uh, living in a Sunday frame of mind, but every day may we learn to never diminish your word, but live your word of love. Be the word. May we let this vessel, this empty vessel of flesh, be love to each and every one that we meet and come across. In your most beautiful name, amen.